So Keith Neal is an infectious disease physician and Professor Emeritus of the University of Nottingham. He joins us now from uh, Derby in England. Professor, hi. Good to see you again. You, you heard Melissa there talk about vaccine nationalism. There's certainly increased competition as across Europe there are varying degrees of infections, slow rollouts, uneven pace of lifting lockdowns. It just feels like this is going to go on uh, for much of the year. I think we're quite right. I think one of the big issues that people have underestimated is the issue of vaccine supply. Even without COVID vaccines, the vaccine supply chain is pretty precarious and occasionally a factory or a batch fails production standards and we have a vaccine shortage. Throughout my working career, we've invariably had some vaccine shortage or not every year. So then how, how does how does how do countries deal with this and in particular when you're dealing with vaccines and then this natural mutations that we're seeing for the virus of different variants that might or might not be less or more effective uh, against within some of these vaccines does that worry you? I, I think the answer is we need sufficient production facilities and it might be that there has to be a slightly greater benefit to people making vaccines at the financial end in Britain, we started manufacturing the Oxford vaccine almost as soon as it was beginning in phase after phase one trials. And essentially, we took a gamble, which is why we're three to four months ahead in production in the EU. The variants are always a potential risk, but we see this annually with the flu virus, and flu viruses mutate slower than coronaviruses. We also have a new technology in these vaccines, which with the RNA, using RNA, which is able to be tweaked much quicker than trying to grow up cells. And in fact, the head of Pfizer has suggested he can change the vaccine in six weeks. It won't necessarily be quite as quick as that because we'll need to actually make sure the vaccine works. But any significant variant we can match. Also, in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going into the summer months, which gives us plenty, and we know the disease began to fall away because during last summer, and there's no reason to believe that it won't this summer, which gives us until September, October, to have ramped up vaccination and production, and if necessary, change the vaccine. While all of this is going on, what do you make also, I think there was a small study showing some pretty positive results uh, for pregnant women and, 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 and getting the vaccine. What do you make of that from your expertise? Uh, I think there's been a lot of worry about pregnant, pregnancy, yes. although most people, most people who are pregnant are young and female, and they're at much lower risk of severe disease. It's only those with underlying conditions we need to worry about, particularly heart disease. I think it bodes well for being able to essentially bring the vaccination age right down to 18 or lower, and we'll be able to control the spread of COVID even more. I think that we're going to see this might become more important because the less circulating virus, the less chances of a mutation occurring that could cause us difficulties. Well, that, that was going to be my next question because Dr. Fauci in the last few days suggested that children would be vaccinated here in the US this year. Do you see authorization being given for children? And again, how does that impact not just vaccine rollout, but again, this issue of herd immunity or whatever you want to call it? I think to actually, we don't have, have sufficient evidence on how efficient children are at spreading it. Now, if we talk about 16, 17, 18 year olds, they're really more young adults than children. And how far, the, particularly in this country, we're not seeing big problems in children in primary school up to the age of 11. It may be that we will need to consider vaccinating them to interrupt transmission completely. But I think we're a little way away from that because we need to do those at most risk of serious disease first. Great to speak to you. Thanks so much. Professor Keith Neal there with the University of Nottingham. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Robin.